Welcome to the HB channel. My name is Hans Beekhuizen and in this show we look at what can go wrong when you hook up your DA converter. Against popular belief the sound quality of a failing digital connection first starts degrading before the connection generates glitches or stops working altogether. Whether the degradation is audible depends on the quality of the equipment used and to a certain extent to the listener's qualities. But how can a signal that only carries ones and zeros go just a bit wrong, pun intended. To explain this I will take the AES3 data stream as an example, but about the same applies to any other digital audio connection. The digital signal starts out as square waves, looking like this. In all four AES3 versions this basic square wave is in fact the clock signal and the zero at the same time. Ones are formed by a square wave of double the frequency. By alternating between square waves of either frequencies both ones and zeros can be sent. This is how such a signal would look like with the clock cycles indicated by the dotted vertical lines. Whether a zero or one is sent can be seen by looking for the polarity change within a clock cycle. Looking at the first cycle we see the signal being high during the entire cycle. There is no change in polarity meaning it is a zero. The second cycle has a transition from low to high halfway the clock cycle and therefore is a one. It also could have been a transition from high to low. It is the polarity change within the cycle that counts. The third cycle remains low so no polarity change, thus a zero. The fourth cycle remains high, again no polarity change within the clock cycle, thus a zero. The fifth cycle goes from low to high halfway, so it is a one. Unfortunately square waves as drawn here cannot exist in a real world since that would require unlimited bandwidth. Normally square waves are more or less distorted and under bad conditions might end up looking more like this. Still that is no problem as long as the distortion is within limits, like here. The input circuit of the DA converter looks at certain points within the clock signal to determine whether the signal is high or low. As long as the signal remains within specifications it will still work without errors as can be seen here. But it is a signal that requires a lot of bandwidth and as little interference as possible. The use of a poor quality cable, the presence of a ground loop or other mishap can easily mutilate a signal like this. At first this might not look that much different from the other signal I showed, but let's see how the input circuit of the DA converter interprets it. The first measurement within the first clock cycle reads a positive, but only just. The second measurement is also positive so the result must be a zero. The second clock cycle starts with a very low, that will be interpreted as a low of course, and a high, since there is a transition within the clock cycle it is a one. The third cycle shows a low and again a very low that will be read as a low. Two lows within the clock cycle means a zero. The fourth cycle shows a low and a high resulting in a one and the fifth cycle shows a low and a high as well again resulting in a 1. Now let's compare this to the original signal and you will see that the fourth clock cycle should have been a 0 instead of a 1. Since digital information is protected by error correction schemes, the error correction will easily correct this one error. But I have only drawn 5 clock cycles here as where a signal at CD quality runs at over 1.4 million bits per second and thus requires 1.4 million clock cycles on the bus. The power of the error correction is limited by the design of the error correction scheme and by the computing power of the electronics in the DA converter. At its limits this might delay the throughput and thus cause jitter. Beyond its limits interpolation is used to repair missing bits and if that is not enough the distortion of the square wave makes it hard for the input circuitry of the DA converter to, to detect the correct clock timing. This can also cause jitter. 
Anyone that's interested in digital audio has heard of Jitter. But what is Jitter? Wikipedia gives the following definition. Jitter is a deviation from true periodicity of a presumed periodic signal in electronics and telecommunications, often in relation to a reference clock source. Great, but what does it mean? To understand this, we have to understand how digital audio works. I promise you, I'll keep it simple. The sound as we hear it is nothing more than propagating variations in air density, a bit like ripples in the water when you throw in a stone. When a microphone is placed so it sees the sound, the membrane of the microphone will move depending on the air pressure variations at any given moment. This causes a voltage at the output of the microphone that has the same shape as the air pressure variations or as technicians say the output vol voltage is analogous to the pressure variations and therefore call that signal analog. To convert it to digital the amplitude of the analog waveform is measured at regular inf intervals. To show how this works I drew a tiny piece of signal, the red line here, against time, the horizontal axis. The straight line is not likely to occur often in real audio, but you will see later why I used it. The analog to digital converter measures the voltages at precise intervals and stores the measured values in the table as seen on the right. The table holding the measurements is then stored onto a hard disk or other storage device. And as long as the signal remains in the digital do domain, you can send it around the world, make copies a thousand generations deep, send it to Mars for all I care and all without loss. Only when losses are intentional, as with MP3 or digital tampering, offering called remastering, you do not get back what was put in. Before playback, digital to analog conversion must be performed. This is the same process as the analog to digital conversion, but in reverse. The digital audio data is read from the hard disk and placed in a table. The analog waveform is then reconstructed by plotting these values at precise time intervals. Precise timing is of the essence. If samples are plotted at irregular intervals, a different waveform is constructed. What had to be a straight line now is a distorted line. These timing inconsistencies are called jitter. Jitter can be caused by all kinds of problems. Interference with other clocks, interference with high frequency signals from cell phones, Wi-Fi or microwaves, ground loops, cable losses and so on. Depending on the kind of interference different sound problems might pop up. Reduced deep lows, muffled mid lows, sharp voices and brass, loss in resolution, stereo image and focusing and so on. The problem can be caused by the source, the player giving out a bad clock, or the DA converter detecting the incoming clock signal poorly or bad handling of the clock signal internally. It might also be caused by bad shielding or losses in the digital interconnect. It might even be a combination of some or all of the above. You might wonder why we bother and not just use analog. Well, both analog and digital have limitations and potential problems. The big advantage of digital is that once digitized the signal is easily stored, transported and copied without any loss. Only when converting to digital and back to analog care must be taken to do it against a very stable clock and use properly designed converters and filters. Our ears are still far more discerning than the best audio measurement equipment available. People that rather believe their measurement equipment than their ears better train their ears. I own one of the best audio measurement devices there is on the market, made by Audio Precision. But it's my ears that tell me when something is really good. The audio precision is fine for proving what's wrong, never for how good equipment is. That doesn't mean your hearing can't play tricks on you. When my brother was young, 
He didn't want to eat Brussels sprouts. But when he was told French cauliflower was on the menu, he ate the sprouts with taste. It's clear that there's no such thing as French cauliflowers. The same phenomenon occurs when we listen to changes in audio. If we have low expectations of a given product, hearing a difference is already enough to experience that product as inferior. Keep that in mind when judging equipment. Having said that, placing equipment on a vibration free shelf, rack or table can make a difference, especially equipment that holds the also critical audio clock. Checking power cord polarity for minimal ground potential can give big sound improvements. We have discussed the importance of good cabling, but it also includes power cables too. If your equipment offers more interconnecting options like AES, EBU and SPDIF, try both options to find the best result. If your DA converter uses an external, external switching power supply, try replacing it with a linear power supply. But whatever you do, don't forget to enjoy the music, for that's what it's all about. You can read the full article, including links, on the hbproject.com. More videos are on the way, so sub subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook page or my Twitter account if you want to remain informed. You'll find the information in the description below. Questions can be posted below, on my Facebook or Google Plus page or on the contact page on the hbproject.com. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends about it. My name is Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.